I have five years of experience uh, in IT industry. Okay, so all these five years in Java only, right? Yes, on Java only. Since the starting, uh, I've been working with Java and uh, uh, been involved in uh, uh, developing enterprise uh, applications. Okay, so let's start with the core Java. Okay, so do you know what is garbage collection? Yes, garbage collection is like uh, when we work on uh, in Java at the runtime. Uh, some mm. a lot of uh, you know the buffer space is used. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the uh, server side, so you know, in JVM as well. So when the server is uh, terminated, then uh, sometimes automatically also you know uh, the, those buffer memories are cleared. So the, that is uh, done by JVM only. But we in, when we enforce JVM to do the garbage collection or mm -hmm. uh, to clean up that buffer memory, then uh, you know the, we need to uh, explicitly give that command as a uh, garbage collector. So you know the, then when uh, you know all the applications and transactions will be completed then in the last of this mm -hmm. garbage collection will also be performed okay so do you know what is daemon thread there is something called daemon thread in garbage collection right yeah uh i heard about that daemon thread uh you know that is also uh related to garbage collector but uh, as of now i'm you know finding re uh, how to recall that uh, daemon thread Okay. But, but yeah, I, uh, as I can uh, yeah, as I can recall that uh, uh, something is related to with uh, garbage collection only. Okay. Okay. No issues. So, do you know what is equal and hash code method contract? Sorry. Uh, could you please repeat that? Equals and hash code method contract. Equals and hash code. Uh, uh, I can recall this so by uh, you know the remembering the functionality of hash map. Actually, if I can. Hmm. And through that how hash map works so basically okay. when we insert some data into hash map so uh, hmm. internally it it uses uh, uh, the memory and internal where uh, values are inserted hmm. the value uh, uh, it's a key uh, keys hash code is used in that inserted now okay. when we insert the second element into a map hmm. then uh, you know that uh, it checks hash code Mm -hmm. And uh, using equals method, uh, it checks whether the key is same or not. If it is the same key, then the value will be overridden. If it is, not, then it will be stored into the bucket as a new entry. So mm -hmm. that is how I can, uh, you know, relate equals and uh, hash code. Okay. So in this case, you are taking string as a key for a hash map, right? Yeah, yeah like it depends. Uh, what are you storing there? Yeah. For this example, I took a string as in uh, key value pair. Okay, suppose there is one object is there, and if I want to make that object as a key of a hash map, do you know how we can do that? A uh, key of an hash map. Hmm. Okay. I think uh, we can do it, uh, and we can uh, store it. Uh, I'm not very, you know, the highly sure about it, but. This can be done, and it's a hash code. So when uh, so each object contains its hash code value. So hmm. this hash code will be uh, calculated there. And I think with uh, as normal operation happens uh, in hash map, and hmm. I think uh, with that only uh, it should restore uh, the key value pair where the key will be an object. Okay. Okay. So which all design patterns are you using in your project? Yeah, so uh, design patterns I'm using uh, you know, uh, with, uh, uh, basically the combination of uh, you know two three design patterns as I can uh, you know the understand about that. So uh, mm. first of all, I'm using a microservices based architectural application design. So in this, we are using design pattern. First is uh, you know the chain of responsibility where you know if multiple microservices are involved in that, mm. then uh, let's say if there is a microservice A and microservice B and microservice C and all these microservices are interrelated. Mm. So this chain of responsibility design pattern works in such a way that if A is, uh, if A has done some work and mm. then it is expecting uh, B to perform some work, then it will be passing that control to B only, then okay. B, then C. So this is called chain of responsibility design pattern. Mm. After that, uh, there is another design pattern, which I'm aware of that is called circuit breaker design pattern, mm. where uh, let's say if certain transactions are being performed on the microservices there, and let's say if the threshold, and let's say something is failing uh, in between the transactions there. And mm. then if certain threshold, if the certain threshold is crossed mm. uh, with the failure count, then mm. circuit breaker pattern uh, works. So in this way, uh, you know, the immediately transactions will be 
or uh, terminated there and uh, mm. some you know customized message will be thrown to the calling applications there okay another one is called uh, you know the api uh, you know api gateway based uh, pattern there where you know if you want to provide some proxy uh, kind of uh, proxy url kind of stuff to the end user and consumer mm. then uh, this api uh, gateway can be used for that so in that way in that way in using api gateway you can divert uh, the flow to the different different interrelated applications and only one url will be exposed in that so uh, these are the some design patterns i am aware of uh, which i am using in my application these are related to microservices right so are you using any design yes. pattern for the java for the core java if i say like something like singleton is there observer or builders design pattern and thing like that are you using yeah so uh, i i am aware of the single design but i i can recall there are multiple design patterns or hmm. you know the which are which can be used uh, for designing uh, you know the very typical java Hmm. uh based on uh, java application but uh, i am based on singleton design pattern where you know the uh, in the singleton design pattern uh, at each layer only you know the, uh, the object which is related, which is created only once there so this hmm. kind of pattern i am using uh you know singleton design pattern i am using in my application okay suppose uh, you have created one singleton class and now an object mm-hmm. is created single object is created right but i can break that by using the clonable correct i can clone that object and create and can create a new object correct so how can you stop that mm-hmm. because your singleton design pattern will break with the clonable interface so how can you stop that do you have you ever and no one i haven't performed this kind of oper- uh, yeah i haven't performed this kind of operation any time hmm. i uh, uh, that, uh, this kind this is kind of new uh, information to me uh, to, to be very frank but yeah uh you know the, for the singleton as i knew that uh, you know the object is created only once and then even if you try to instantiate multiple times hmm. the uh, same hash code value will be written uh, for the singleton so okay. like i haven't performed this task to answer your question okay no issues do you know what is solid principles um sorry i'm not recalling that no issues no issues okay uh, which version of java are you using uh currently i'm using java 1.8 okay java 1.8 okay so do you know what is default method uh, in yes, functional default, yeah yeah default yeah. yeah yes yes so uh, default methods are something like which provides a uh, yeah, con- some you know the by default static implementation of any functionality there so uh, we have the concept of functional interfaces uh, mm. in, uh, in java 8 Mm-hmm. where you know the uh, these default methods are introduced in this functional interfaces so if any uh, class wants to uh, uh, wants to uh, implement those functional interface they mm-hmm. will they can use this default methods here. so basically if it's like you are uh, you know imposing some uh, you know the generic implementation to all the classes which will be implementing this functional interface so this is called default method where you are providing a similar kind of implementation in each of the classes okay okay so do you know sql injection uh sql injection uh, i haven't performed recently uh, because uh, i am working on in other databases you know, for when it comes to sql I'm, i have worked on very basic uh, you know the query implementation no no uh, it's something the data okay it is something related to securing your application have you heard of ovas yeah uh we i heard about it and sql injection i heard about it when mm. uh, you know whenever there is a some query of you know the, for the uh, for the application for the url then you know some data can be some uh, malicious information can be injected into url mm. and that can be used to you know the fetch the data so i Correct, know about yeah. the sql injection mm. and uh, in that i think uh, to prevent that uh, you know we could use uh, you know prepared statements Okay. where uh, you okay. know the using prep- yeah yeah using using prepared statements uh, you know the, mm. you can just provide the parameters value for that so in that way you are not directly uh, you know the executing your query with directly with the value but through the mm. parameters so using using prepared statement you can uh, you know eliminate that sql injection so how are you establishing communication between microservices okay so the the very uh, the very uh, you know the core uh, fundamental of establishing connection is between microservices is like you need to use rest template okay around that uh, you have uh, you have many features to achieve mm. that thing basically uh, one is you know the directly implementing 
the URL and uh, call it, uh, using that URL and calling that uh, calling uh, another application using REST template. Mm-hmm. Another one is call, another concept called uh, service discovery and registry, using which also you can do this. But in the core, again, a REST mm-hmm. template will be used. So to answer your question, uh, the REST template is something uh, which is used to establish the communication among uh, microservices. Okay. Other than REST template, do you know there is uh, other thing also? Uh, uh, I think uh, Fain client is there. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't used this uh, in my project, but uh, I'm aware that a Fain client is uh, you know, one dependency mm-hmm. which is provided in Spring Boot, mm-hmm. which can be used to you know, call a different applications there. So I haven't tried that in my application since there were no requirement, but yeah, I have seen somewhere and seen some uh, you know, very, uh, you know, very basic implementation of that. So Fain client can also be used for that. Have you worked on stream APIs of Java 8? Yes, I have used uh, some basic features, uh, mm-hmm. you know, for basic methods from my stream API, uh, mm-hmm. some, uh, and in that some intermediate and terminal methods mm-hmm. are present uh, are uh, available to mm-hmm. use some basic operations on the collections, basically. So yeah, I have used it. Okay. Do you know what is the difference between stream and parallel stream in Java? Uh, though I didn't get yeah, though I didn't get the chance or didn't implement explicitly uh, those things, but uh, as I recall that uh, you have to, to make it a faster process, mm. uh, you know, the, you can use parallel stream instead of single stream, though stream is also faster compared mm. to the, you know, the, uh, some, uh, you know, typical implementation, which we, which we used to do in Java seven, but yeah, again, to make it a bit faster, uh, you mm. know, parallel stream is also a bit ahead of, uh, you know, stream implement, implementation. So mm. I just know uh, that this is what the concept is, but yeah, I haven't implemented that uh, in my project actually. Okay, no issues. Okay, now uh, okay. if I make any variable as static, okay, will that particular variable mm. will take part in serialization or not? Static variable at the class level, mm. I think that will be because, uh, as per my understanding, that that will be because we are not using any uh, transient keyword for that. And based on the definition, uh, I think uh, that uh, that will also be. Okay, so you're trying to say that particular variable will take part in serialization, right? Uh, that's what I'm saying, but uh, I'm you know not very confident about this whether it will be there because I haven't tried that. Okay, okay, try it once. Okay, so yeah, uh, sure. yeah. do you know the internal working of hash set? Internal working of hash set. Uh, I think that also works uh, on the concept of <clears throat> hash coding only, and uh, you know, the, but not very uh, you know uh, surely about that, that mm. exactly how it works. But I think if we go by the name, then mm. uh, you know the, that might be using hash code value while uh, storing uh, the elements into the set. Okay. So not not recalling that. Mm internal i mean in hash set if you will go and see there internally they will be using the hash map only okay 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 uh do you know how we can make the hash map as synchronized yeah so to uh make hash map as synchronized uh mm-hmm. we, you can uh, i think you can use this in a synchronized block how can uh, we make that or set? you can uh, or uh, you can use the concurrent hash map which is uh, by default uh, then, uh, you know, uh, synchronized uh, when it comes to the multi-threading environment. Okay. But, but ha- uh, hash map, uh, hmm. I think, okay, so you can create any uh, synchronous, when, when I say, so let's say if, if you, are, you can create a method and then you can use the hash map or in that method and on top of that method, you can use synchronized keyword there. So whenever there will be an in, uh, interaction with the th- threads, though that will be a thread safe. That's what I yet understand. If you want to you know, mm. make as much synchronized. Okay. Have you ever heard of collections class? Yes. Yeah, so uh, for the collection interface, uh, some collections uh, collection classes also collections classes provided mm. in which some uh, methods are there which can be performed over all the collection interfaces. Okay. So inside that collections class, we have a method called synchronized map that will be used to make a hash map as synchronized map. Okay. Okay. So I'm done with the interview. Do